Asian divorces and gold, a really common issue that we have to deal with as family lawyers, perhaps less so over time, but still the gifting of gold and expensive jewellery is quite a common feature in Asian divorces. So where do you stand? Basically, if you are gifted gold or jewellery as part of the marriage ceremony or thereafter at significant events, say, for example, when a child is born, then as the receiver of that gift, you get to keep it. But, and there's always a but in family law, which is full of shades of grey, when you disclose your financial assets, you do have to have that valued and disclosed. Now, often there's a lot of dispute over gold. People will say, well, um, I can't find it anymore, or it's been given to another family member. And there's a lot of piecing together as to what's actually happened over time. The other dispute is on valuation. Now, you can often have a single joint valuation where you share the cost of a valuer uh, and actually agree the value that's going to be put into the asset schedule. The last one I did, the valuer charged about £1,000, but that did include going to a Metro Bank deposit box and the gold was valued at nearly £42,000, so it's definitely proportionate. The other issue that can arise is that people will say, that is a family heirloom, that Rani Har was my great-great-grandmother's. At that point, we can argue whether it's a non-matrimonial asset. Again, it's very case specific, but what I would say is don't underestimate the value of gold and jewellery in Asian divorces because it can add to the asset pot and it is money that can be realised pretty quickly. Good luck.